how to find your ultimate purpose in life. Human nature, we uh, put up these grand extreme visions of what we would like to be, of where we'd like to go, of what we'd like to accomplish. And um, we find out very quickly that we don't even end up headed in that direction after the first few steps. We start heading into di directions we didn't even know were there. And for some of us, this is a different kind of excitement, something new, an adventure. For others of us, this becomes very disconcerting very quickly. I wanted this. I thought I was headed for this. I imagined I could do this, and I'm not even a tenth of the way there, and I'm already veering way off course. What is happening? And this can cause some stress for a lot of us. And, um, but uh, what about the people who do get there? Or what about the people who just seem to um, have been given so much that it seems like they have so many resources to go get those things that the rest of us seem like we need to scratch and scramble just to get to the to the teeniest, tiniest, tiniest percentage of even beginning to get to that same place. Uh, you know, the, the cliche is movie stars and rich people and, oh, they can do this, they can do that. Imagine what that lifestyle is like. And uh, nothing against them or it or the lifestyle or any of it. But um, what truly brings lifetime fulfillment and happiness. Well, there's a story. There's a man who's actually a king. He was born a king. And uh, in this particular story, the way it goes, uh, he was a f favored um, from the heavens. And so it was spoken to this young king as he took his kingship um, that he could have any one um, one granted wish, whatever he wanted. It's kind of like a story you hear in a lot of different uh, other stories. So he was he was um, given this one. He could have one wish, and he said he thought about it. And he said he said uh, his answer to heaven was, "I'm so lucky. I'm so." I am so blessed to be born into this kingship and I am responsible for a tremendous people and who can govern this people. All I ask for is wisdom so that I don't do a crappy job governing this amazing people. Well, heaven was very impressed and was like, well, you didn't ask for riches. You didn't ask for the death of of every other kingdom on earth that would come against you. You didn't ask for fame. You asked for something very wise already and responsible and mature. And therefore you shall have it. You shall have great wisdom. And because you did not ask for these things, you shall also have great riches. And you shall also have a reign of peace without having to fight enemies constantly. So boom, this king started out, sounds good, right? Yes. Well, he went along and he did his thing and he did his king stuff. And uh, according to the story, he showed himself to have great wisdom and, and the, all of his people were like, wow, we're super awesome, lucky to have this awesome king. Yes. And things are going all right for a while, maybe a few years, maybe decades. And eventually, <coughs> at one point, this king was like, all right, now what? You know, everything's under control. I don't have to fight any enemies. I don't have to amass any riches. I'm all, I already have more wealth than any other kingdom. What do I do? And so he said to himself, I went about to see what is the best thing for man to do during his short time on this earth. And so I listed all the things that man desires, all the deepest, exciting dreams 
that are common to almost any man. And I went down the list and I tried each one. What could they be? Adventure. Um, getting the most beautiful women. Um, the most lavish parties. The most exciting, wonderful food and wine and drink and entertainment. Hired dancers and, you know, everything you could possibly have at that time. Tried it all. And at the end of each one, his conclusion was, that was interesting for a minute, but ultimately that was really unfulfilling. In fact, I am very upset to say, this king said, that that, each check mark, each, list, each thing he tried, and he tried it to the fullest. He spare, He said, I spared myself no limit, no expense. He didn't like dabble in it and be like, ooh, oh, okay, I did a little. No, he just went, bam, like, like, let's see what we can get out of this. Let's take it all. And at the very end, he said, you know, my wisdom stayed with me. Luckily, I didn't, he didn't lose his mind. And he said, I came out of it on the other end. Like, that was stupid. That was a waste of time. At the end of that, I have nothing to show for it. I have nothing meaningful added to the time of my life. So then he despaired after each one of these things. He said, "This surely this next thing will be the thing that I will learn that is great for mankind to do. And at the end, he's like, now that was stupid too. Now that was pointless. Now that was worthless. Now that was stupid. And finally he said, I, I just began to despair. And I said, well, what is the point then? What is the point for man underneath all the days that he walks under this sun? And then he just calmed down for a minute and he sat on his throne and he looked around his kingdom. And then he said, I observed that the average common man going about his work in the field, taking care of his animals, fixing his fence and building his walls and caring for his little daily chores, I found that he's found fulfillment. And I found that I could see joy on his face at times. And I said to myself, Oh, man, if you can find joy in your work, this is a good thing. And that is the only thing he kept coming back to. The fascinating thing is, is it really about having everything and accomplishing everything that brings you ultimate joy and fulfillment? Or is it going about the normal daily things and tackling the little tasks and the little problems that are unique to your life that brings the joy and the happiness and the fulfillment. And this wise, rich king saw etched on the faces of the average people in his kingdom more fulfillment, more contentment, more meaning, more purpose in the people that were just doing their everyday chores, doing them well, doing them the right way, than he found in all his great chasing after amazing dreams and, and, and uh, craziness and, and passionate whatever. You look at all the rich people and the movie stars and it's everybody, it's so easy to think that they're the lucky ones. And it's cliche to say it, but could it really be true that they, at the end, will actually look more at you and see that you may be more the lucky one? But it's not just in not being rich. 
that makes you happy. It's finding the joy in your work. And he doesn't say finding work that makes you joyful. Especially at those times, people couldn't choose their work. It's not like today where we, we actually have a lot more freedom comparatively in history. So it's not like quit your job and look for a, a job that will give you true fulfillment. I mean, not saying don't do that, but where you are right now, the jobs you have, the tasks you have, the ones you don't want, the ones you wish you didn't have to do, but you know you really do, finding joy in them. Where could your joy be? Could it be in doing a task a little faster, turning it into a game? Could it be in just rushing through the tasks you don't like to do so you can get to the one you really want to do and reward yourself with that? No, going out of your way to please your manager or boss by doing a little extra or just showing you care by going out of your way and doing something for someone else after you do all the stuff you need to do. If you're feeling down, if you're feeling in a rut, if you're feeling really overwhelmed, if you're feeling even worse than what I just said, there's a million answers out there for what you could possibly do. And some of them seem hard and some of them seem easy and some of them seem expensive and some of them say that you should talk to someone else and, you know, and I'm not going to say what is the right whatever for you, but try looking at what's what right in front of you and try picking a task and try something new like organize a sock drawer or um, go through a box in the basement or that, that, that drawer that everybody has that just accumulates all kinds of nuts and bolts and rubber bands and twistums and odds and ends. Go through that, clear out the whole thing. Just feel good about accomplishing a task. Pick a task that maybe start with one you know you're good at. Do a couple of those. And then over a couple days, maybe be a little brave. Pick a task that you're not really that good at and not, don't really enjoy that much. And maybe try to knock out one of those. And maybe, ooh, maybe it's not so bad. Maybe I am kind of good at this. Yeah, maybe I don't have to be afraid of doing this and put it off till the end of the year every every year, you know. Um, but for all of the self-help out there and all of the wisdom and all of the books and the teachings and everything under the sun, there's another simple little story where uh, there was this prophet guy and he uh, he was given this very simple message. And it goes along with the message of the king, I think. Although the king found it roundabout. He tried everything, every other way to dis to prove. He did the opposite to prove the one thing. He wasn't looking to prove it, but that's what he ended up with. Well, this, uh, this prophet in the second story, he was just given simply the anecdote and it was just three things. Oh man, what is your whole job on this earth? Just three things. To do justice by your fellow man. Do what's right. Don't cheat anybody. To love mercy. Because even when you do what's right by everybody, some people are going to screw up and they're going to fall short and they're not going to do justice by you. And so you could say, oh, I did justice by everybody, so <laughs> you didn't do justice by me? Forget you. I'm not giving you anything good anymore. I'm cutting you off. Like, But that's that's not the way. Do just by everyone and then love mercy. Love being kind to those who don't always deserve it or haven't always lived up to their end. Don't be a doormat, but love that you've done the right thing so much that you're in a position where, where you can show mercy without it really, you know, overwhelming you. Do justice, love mercy. and walk humbly
understand that no matter how great you are, the everything around you, all the people, all the possibilities are so endless and amazing that you should always be like a little kid in wonder. And, so, and the third one is just walk humbly with whoever you believe is above you. Whatever that happens to mean to you. And that just may be a way to find your ultimate purpose.